Hello, my name is Samantha Wood and I'm a senior studying engineering at the George Washington University. On behalf of Engineering Tomorrow, I'm delighted to welcome you to our Inspired to Engineer video series. Engineering Tomorrow is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to increase the number of high school students who enroll in college and pursue an engineering degree. In addition to offering field trips to our engineering labs and local engineering sites in various cities, we also provide high school students virtual lab experiences and virtual interviews with professional engineers around the world who are leaders in their respective fields. These engineers share their career experiences, discuss unique engineering challenges they've solved, and provide thoughtful advice to aspiring engineers. Today, I am very pleased to introduce you to our guests, Mr. John Watson and Mr. Adrian Picaro. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my first question is, how would you describe your path to engineering and along the way, what inspired you like most to your profession? Thanks. Um, so I guess when I was uh, in Ireland, uh, kind of considering what to do at the end of school, uh, my biggest thing was I wanted to be a professional footballer, so like a soccer player, and I wanted to play for Liverpool. I still kind of pulled out that I might get a call up, but yeah, <laughs> kind of ended up in um, two universities I could have gone to. Uh, I was quite academic. I like maths. I like science. I was strong, strong at those. Um, but we also had a family business and in our business we had a lecturer at the local university or local college who was an electrical engineer and uh, I guess he uh, he kind of stayed with us for many many years and he's been like an extended family member so he had a big influence on that and I ended up going to Queen's University in Belfast um, partly because I didn't make the football team of the other, uh, the other university so uh, that's where I ended up. Um, I really liked chemistry uh, when I was in secondary school or high school and had this kind of kind of view that I'd like to work in some sort of large industrial kind of chemical industry um, when, I, when I kind of graduated and thus went and studied chemical engineering as a path. How about you, John? Great. Well, uh, I got into engineering. Um, I was at school and I, I left home while I was still at school and I was lucky enough to stay with some friends and they had a, a lovely family and the father of that family was an engineer and he was looking at the subjects that I happened to be better at, maths and physics and technical drawing and he suggested I look to engineering and I always wanted to go to university um, and no one else in my family had been to university so I was really keen to do that. And I went to Glasgow University to study mechanical design engineering. Uh, and after that, I stayed on at university to do a math and science and IT. So with the two of those subjects, I think I really enjoyed my time in university. Nice. Yes, um, science and, I mean, math and physics are also very like important in the field. That's really great. Um, so my next question is, throughout all of your experiences, what would you say would be your career highlight? John, are you going to lead off? Yeah, I think my career highlight is being very recent. I like traveling and experiencing new parts of the world. Um, and I was working at Edinburgh Airport as part of my job here at Global Infrastructure Partners. And we do get to travel a lot and see different cultures and look at the way businesses are run in different parts of the world. I think for me, that's the most exciting part of the work that we do. We, we can choose um, quite a lot of what we do every day. And for me, it's working with great people all over the world. So for me, just the travel. I love that. And I couldn't do that unless I built up the experience in the early part of my career to go around the world and look at different businesses. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not sure I could kind of pinpoint to any one career highlight, but I always kind of look at, um, you know, when I'm in a role to kind of, kind of challenge myself, have I, what have I achieved versus kind of what am I doing day to day? And I think if I think about going back to even things like really early in my career when I had an internship with Procter & Gamble uh, and had the opportunity to go and redesign a, a, a project. Um, so the real kind of classic process engineering, could you take some cycle time out of that right through to other, other kind of, pieces in my career and I always remember kind of the advice about kind of getting those achievements under your belt. I think similar to John, John, John and I worked together at the airport and I think airports as infrastructure are pretty cool because 
um, they're leaving kind of a, a lasting legacy in terms of infrastructure development. And we've taken an airport that was um, probably originally designed for 1 million passengers and now it's kind of designed ready for 20 million passengers whenever we get back flying. But um, it's something very tangible that you can go and I can bring my kids out to and say, hey, there's, there's that project I showed you on paper, it's now built. So we've done numerous extensions from on the terminal to in the airfield to building a, build, building a new, uh, well, a road, but also a kind of a, a drop-off point as well. So uh, lots of stuff there that can look back with great pride. That's very interesting. I love the thing about, um, you know, having the experience to travel. It's really nice. Um, okay, so uh, I know that both of you have had mentors in the past. How, can you explain how that really shaped your engineering career? Adrian, you want to go first? Yeah, we're going to like a tag team here. Yeah, I, I think um, I think the thing with mentors, or, or even as you get kind of on in your career, it's great having a network of being able to um, kind of talk to people who, you, who are trusted and that you can get advice from. Um, so if I go back to when I started in General Electric, I started one of their leadership programs back in 99. Um, there's people there that I still work with today that um, I can pick up the phone and have a chat with, be it, um, <clears throat> you know, primarily kind of professional advice. But as you get to know people, um, you know, the, the kind of uh, what merges from professional and kind of friendships uh, over time. So um, I think it's one of those things is uh, you're, you're never too old or you to, to think that you can't get advice or be able to pick the phone up and talk to people. Very true. What about you, John? Yeah, I've been lucky enough to work with a number of people that I would consider mentors throughout my entire career, even from a school right up until now. I think the one that stands out most for me, I was working in a company um, and I was the finance director and the chairman looked after me throughout my entire time at the company. Um, and a few years later, I was interested in changing my career. And he was one of the people I spoke with and with an hour of the conversation, he had connected me to a number of people who helped me change my career. And, you know, he was able to do that because we had mutual trust. And, you know, I was very open with him about challenges I was facing in my career and what I wanted to do next. And he helped me with some really constructive but positive feedback. It was very direct because he got to know me very well. And I think the ability to have a very open conversation with someone you trust when you're facing challenges, probably the most valuable thing you can have in a mental relationship. And to have a number of people that you trust for that, I think is even more important. So it's not just one mentor, I think you need to build over your career, it's many. So with challenges in mind, how important would you say it is to have a problem solving skill set in your engineering industry? Well, I think uh, if you spend most of your time understanding the problem, then the solution becomes a lot easier to design. And when you're learning engineering, you are taught very formal methods of problem solving. Um, no matter what type of engineering you learn, there are very similar methods. Um, and when you then start work as an engineer, you take that to a really advanced level. So we have the pleasure at Global Infrastructure of working with some great engineers in our team. And their problem solving capabilities are really, really tuned. They've spent many, many years. But the basics of what they do are the same basics of what you're taught at university. Um, I think the key in solving any problem is just to take the time and really understand what the problem is you're trying to solve. Yeah, no, I think absolutely true. I think um, I think when it comes to a kind of a problem, you generally find that um, the solution side of it is the easiest and actually framing a problem, really understanding it, and um, sometimes admitting that you know you don't understand it is quite difficult and you might need some help and um, I think as you progress in your career and you get more experience and become more senior you have more responsibility sometimes people think that you've always got the answers and I think being kind of uh, big enough and brave enough to actually say hey let's understand this problem in a, in a wider group um, is, is one way of doing it uh, I think um, I think that, that bit there about being able to kind of step back and you could have multiple elements to the problem, but um, trying to spend as much time up front before you kind of go jump into the solution because um, I think that's, that's sometimes where you can waste time, waste money and ultimately see, see no reward for it. 
And um, another question I have is, where do you see technology fitting into your engineering professional career and how can you mold that into explaining how the crisis in the world today? Uh, technology is a part of our life, irrespective of whether you're an engineer or not. Uh, but I'll give you an example of a company I'm working with right now. Uh, it's a vertical farming business. So it's a business that takes the ability to grow crops indoors that control the light and the watering and the wind, and it creates a little mini climate. Now they've got some really clever technology, really basic technology, but they're applying it to food children. And right now, while we are responding to the threat of COVID-19, you know, the ability to grow and harvest food locally, I think has never been more important in some parts of the world, because we are, we are struggling with our global supply chain. This problem has become even more important right now. But more importantly, it actually saves water. Now, a lot of the water we use, fresh water in, in this country, is used to grow crops. Um, it saves on land. So a, a vertical farming business that uses technology is helping to feed the world, feed the world in places where it's really good to get food. And for me, just the understanding of that technology and then being able to apply that for business sense so we can grow a global business is really, really exciting. And, you know, I think unless there's a purpose like that to a business, it becomes really difficult to be so committed. And this is a business with real purpose. Yeah, I mean, if we look at where we are with technology, we're, we're doing this remotely, I think it's just becoming a way of life. And if I think of one of the big challenges at the airport at the moment about kind of COVID, and how can you give confidence and assurance to the airport is a safe place? How do you, how do you give people confidence insurance that flying is safe um, and some of the most simple things we're advising is well please wash your hands before you come into the building please maybe wear a face covering it, it's not very high tech but if you look at the other side of it some of the advancements that we want to be able to make with rapid testing can you do contact tracing can you give people uh, kind of a digital app so I think um, more and more particularly in the digital space that we're going to see uh, ability for machine learning kind of decision making from kind of frontline uh, staff made easier and so on so that's nice i think contact tracing will probably be the most interesting technology that like probably did be developed so nice yeah we're we're, we're considering um some of our construction sites getting back open and one of the uh, the building companies uh, of a very kind of simple kind of uh, device that you wear and it's like a proximity sensor and it's again about how do you get this kind of two meter separation so you know it's another l layer of how do you go to government to say look we have a safe uh, way of working but equally how do you say to your employees you know this is just a tool to help you uh, help be safe on, in, in the work environment it seems that leadership opportunities across all industries are searching for professional skills that engineers possess. Would you agree and how do you see that in your own field? Yeah, well, I think we're, we're quite lucky because our boss uh, really values engineers. So we get a bit of a head start on, on other professions, you know, particularly lawyers and finance people. But uh, so I think what, what do you get from engineering? I think uh, I'd probably... Um, and maybe some of the, you, you can refer to this back at university, but what I recall is uh, engineering was pretty hard work back then. You had a lot of lectures, you had a lot of hours compared to some other courses. So I think uh, it kind of instilled a real kind of work ethic. Uh, it's highly regarded in terms of, um, if you want to call it intellectual capacity to be able to qualify as an engineer. You're, you know, some people will class you as smart. Uh, but I think uh, it gives you a kind of a, a really good platform and start in terms of professional career. I think what you do thereafter is, is key. Uh, I think the hard work, the energy to kind of get your engineering degree is only the start of it. That has to continue through your working environment. But uh, if you can build on that and the success of coming out of uh, university with an engineering degree, you're in a really good place. I think if you can also use that to open open doors or open opportunity to get into um, either employment with people who have good structured uh, kind of training programs, leadership programs is really, really helpful and have a kind of a, a culture and a heritage of developing engineers and also developing leaders. It's great. I, I was quite fortunate that um, I started with General Electric back uh, 
back over 20 years ago and that's probably one of, one of my biggest breaks and one of the good opportunities so great i mean i think uh, university is just another step of learning and the learning never stops and once you get into the first workplace it is about understanding how to be part of the team uh, how to play your part in the business and i think for me you know, I went on to become a chartered accountant straight after leaving university and I joined PricewaterhouseCoopers, which as well as being an accountant, I learned a lot about law and business. And for me, that was just another learning experience. But thereafter, I learned lots about management and leadership, again, with companies who are willing to invest in their employees. And now, you know, I'm in a position where I'm leading companies or playing a part in a leadership role it's my turn to invest in others uh, in the same way. And I think that's the most important lesson for me is the learning doesn't stop at school. It doesn't stop at university. The learning opportunity goes right to the end. So I think the key is just to find opportunity to learn. And being a professional is just one of the things you can learn when you start work after university. Thank you. And finally, I have one more question. For our high school students who are entering college or college bound, um, do you have any advice for them if they're considering engineering? Yeah, I think um, I, I think anything um, I'd say in terms of advice to kind of young people, um, try and uh, identify the stuff that you love doing, what you have a passion for, what makes you kind of a spring in your step, what's going to energize you. I think it's really important that whatever you're doing, you should be having fun at it, you should enjoy it. I think um, having an open mind, I think you've heard from John, studied engineering but went into a kind of a finance career. Um, you know, I studied engineering, I also did some studies with, with finance. Uh, I'm quite a generalist now, kind of a business management. So I think having an open mind um, in terms of um, what could be in front of you. I think trying new things. I think, um, you know, I've worked across different industries from uh, very early on. I worked with DuPont. I worked with Procter & Gamble, kind of traditional engineering chemical businesses. Worked for General Electric. Worked for a waste business. So I tell people as a bin man. And now kind of lastly in airports, kind of in an infrastructure. So I think uh, that all that opportunity and open-mindedness, again, uh, I've worked in the United States, now living in, in the UK. So I think uh, it's just, as you go ahead in life, it's just a great opportunity to have an open mind. And I think the things that, you know, whatever has worked for you in kind of high school or that form of education um, to get the opportunity is hard work is huge and it doesn't go away as you, uh, as you get older. Um, so that, that would be my advice. Adrian said earlier that you know engineering it was hard, uh, and there are times when you go to university it will be hard, but genuinely worth it. Especially if you like engineering, if you like the physics, you like the chemistry, you like the maths, whatever type of engineering you do, you know it should keep you excited. And getting through university, getting a degree, and being an engineer opens doors for you. It creates choice. I think choice is such a valuable commodity in life. So, you know, choosing what you do for a living, choosing where you do it, choosing who you work with. You know, for me, engineering was the, the key for me to you know, transform my life uh, and create a choice that you know, I take you know, really seriously now. I really enjoy the choices I have. And, you know, I think there'll be more in life. So do the hard work, enjoy it, get through it, and life begins then. Have fun. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you look forward to more episodes of Inspire to Engineer.